So I appreciate you all showing up. I know this is a nice tight little group and I just lost my clicker. Just so you know, I do record all these videos. None of you are in the video where you're at right now, but if you were to get up or anything, they might see your face. Is that gonna be an issue for you? I, I just post it to our YouTube page. So that's fine, okay. Because if, if we were gonna have an issue, I just have whoever doesn't wanna potentially get caught in the video, move to the back of the bus. But, so, holiday red zone. What do you guys think that means? Danger ahead. Danger ahead, yeah. That's typically what we think of when we think red, right? <laughs> so, it's this time of year. What's hitting us at with a lot higher intensity? Parties, financial stress. Finance. Yeah. You said it in a single word, stress. All that stuff, and that includes the finances. That's, that's why we do these workshops. It's all about helping give you guys the tools you need to help interpret what your body's telling you navigate through that, express higher qualities of health, okay? And holiday red zone. This graph pretty much says it all. Here we have graphed out over a long period of time the incidents from 2070, or 1973 to 2001 where we see the peaks of things like heart attacks. Look at the peak. Christmas to New Year's. Holiday times, right? Not only heart attacks. Same can be said for strokes. Same, unfortunately, can be said for things like suicides. This is a time of year a lot of things happen to people. And it's because this is a high stress time of year, okay? When it comes to our resources, you said it yourself, parties, money, all that stuff. We have limited resources, right? We have ultimately four limited resources. What are they? Time, energy, focus, money. Exactly. And what did you say? Time. Energy, oh. focus, money, yeah. Most of the answers are on the screen. And I know you're a new one, though, and I'm happy you're a new one. I love seeing new faces at these things. Most of the time, I ask a lot of questions. The answers are on the screen. But, so time, energy, focus, and money. We all have limited amounts of these all of our lives, right? When are all these taxed the most heavily throughout the year? Right now, through the holidays, right? So that's what the holiday red zone is about. That's why we have this workshop around this time of year. Stress. Have you seen a few of the you at my workshops before? I know some of you have been to Dr. Matt's workshop. We talked about the, being attacked by a bear. Does anybody remember that story? What happens when I'm being attacked by a bear? Your uh, stress and adrenaline. Yeah, I get that flight or flight response. My body, being intelligent and want to preserve my life, is going to say, "Okay, you've got to get the energy to fight that bear to the death, or get your butt out of there before the bear kills you." Right? It's doing all this stuff. Stress hormone production goes up. Melatonin, the sleep neurotransmitter hormone, goes down. Blood pressure goes up because we got to get the blood moving, especially to the extremities where I need to be able to fight that bear back. Our cholesterol regulation, that helps with things like clotting, healing. Uh, down regulate ins insulin sensitivity. So if I'm eating, so if I just ate something, I'm digesting that, I'm being attacked by a bear. Do you think my body's worried about digesting lunch? No, it's worried about fighting the bear. If I get out of there, it'll take care of lunch later. So it doesn't worry about things like inflammation, swelling go up, weakness in our connective tissues, our immune system goes down. So same concept. I, I'm getting over a, a pretty bit nasty flu, flu virus. I'm glad I actually have a voice to talk to you guys today because last week this time I didn't think I was gonna be able to do it. But my body, if I'm being fight, 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 fighting a bear, it's not gonna worry about that virus. It's not gonna worry about a bacterial infection. Why is that? Yeah, I gotta survive the bear attack. Just like it's not gonna digest my lunch when I'm fighting the bear, it's going to downregulate. Hey, that virus, yeah, we wanna take care of that, but right now we're prioritizing what's the main priority? Get your butt out of there or kill a bear. So we have all that stuff, and that's a big one. That's why a lot of us tend to get sicker around the holidays. So body signals, this diagram, beautiful explanation for a lot of the symptoms we experience. What are the symptoms on this picture? No, we're not sinking. It's actually floating. That's the symptoms up here. You guys remember when it comes to pain, how much of the nervous system is responsible for relaying pain signals? Six to 8%, less than 10% of the nerves. So you think about any pain, any discomfort you felt in your life, tiny percent of your nerves control that. It's important, it's a good thing from the perspective when it's there, it's your body's way of trying to say, hey, pay attention, you got a problem, fix this thing, okay? But like we've talked about, I think, 
think I've talked about with all of you at this point, one of the last things to crop up and one of the first things often go away is the actual pain. Or say I have pain, I go to that thing behind the mirror in my, my bathroom, we call it a medicine cabinet, right? Get the ibuprofen, the Tylenol, and everything. I take that thing, takes care of the pain. I chopped off the top of my iceberg. But what's still there? All this stuff, right? And then we ignore this, because now we don't feel it anymore. Life's good, pain's gone, the problem's fixed, right? Yeah. We're ignoring this, and then I come back, say six months later, what's back? All the pain. All the pain, the ice is sticking out of the top again, and what's gotten worse? All the ice underneath, this has gotten bigger. So by ignoring the problem, we allow the problem to get worse. By taking out our body's way of time to tell our brain, hey, we got a problem, i.e. taking that ibuprofen or something to help numb the pain, and I'm not saying there's not a time and a place for those things, there definitely is, but when that's our go-to reaction, which it is for a lot of people, that's where it's limiting your own body's natural coping mechanisms to take care of its problems. The wellness continuum. So we're all on this continuum. Most of you have seen this graph, right? At some point? No? Okay. Well, we're going over it now. So the great thing about this graph is it explains it all. We're all on here somewhere. There's where everybody wants to be, i.e. perfect health, expressing good health, Here's where nobody wants to be. Unfortunately, where do you guys think I meet most people for the first time? Somewhere over here, right? And it's not usually at the first signs of things, like, oh, I got a little stiffness in my neck. It goes away, right? Problem's gone. It's not really gone, just we got used to it. And then a little bit later, maybe it's harder for you to turn my head. Problem's a little bit worse, but maybe I can take care of it with my... It's usually when people are pretty symptomatic or they're suffering from some kind of disability that I meet them the first time. They've been dealing with the problem for so long, they're failing to adapt to it, and that's when they come and see, meet me the first time, okay? And our job is to make sure we're helping them stop going this direction. Now, the thing about this spectrum is we're all on here, and we're all moving on here. And every day we're making decisions that are gonna help push us to the good side or the bad side. And then, if you think about the, the principle of con, con, compounding interest, if I'm making lots and lots and lots and lots of bad decisions, what happens? Your problem, gets bigger. Your problem gets bigger. And it's not just like, I got a bad decision, I add that bad decision, I add that bad decision. We start getting that snowball effect. Now I'm getting some bad momentum with all the poor decisions I'm making that's pushing me to this way and it's carrying me this way. So even if I stop making some of the bad decisions, it might not be enough to stop me from continuing in that direction. We're here to help get everybody making decisions that are not only gonna stop progress in this way, start making progress in this way. And if you can see all that, I don't know, I know it's pretty small. We look at signs, symptoms, disability on the bad side. What are the facets on the good side? Awareness, education, growth. That's what this is about. That's why we're here. We're trying to share knowledge with you guys. And I hope a lot of it seems like common sense as we're going through, because I get that a lot. It seems like it's, a lot of this seems like common sense. And I agree. And that's a, I always get excited with that, because I know that means people are thinking. But ultimately what I ask is not that you guys think like me as I'm presenting all this. I want you to think and make your own decisions. And hopefully what I'm saying with you resonates and makes a lot of sense, because a lot of it is, when it boils down to it, kind of common sense. So pain, we just hit this one, less than 10% of the nerves, only about six to 8%. Tiny little part of that part of the nerve explains pain, okay? We have this big old honking nerve, we could compress, we could irritate, we could inflame, we could reduce function on, but never feel it as pain if it's not lighting up that tiny little part that says, hey, this hurts, okay? And that's why pain is not a great way of determining when do I have a problem, where is the problem, how severe is the problem. Don't be wrong, you're dealing with pain, we know there's a problem there, but it's not a be-all, catch-all. It means that we've gotta figure out, okay, what's driving that symptom, what's driving that pain, and fix what's driving it. Then we have our better premise. First of all, are we healthy, are we, is healthy normal or abnormal? Normal, right? We all are designed to express health. No, don't be wrong, sometimes there are some genetic predispositions that some people get a bad shake in life. I'm not here to argue against that, it, it does happen. But the vast majority of like 99 plus percent of us have all the genes we need to express perfect health at all times. 
So healthy is normal, but unhealthy is a new norm that we've created in our very unnaturally stressful modern lifestyles. Is your body smart or stupid? You guys are crazy smart. Think of all the stuff that you're doing right now without even thinking about it. Heart's beating, lungs breathing, digesting food if you just ate recently. The fact that you can, I'm moving my mouth, moving my tongue, vibrating some cords in my throat, making noises that are hitting your eardrums. Those vibrations are going to your brain. You're interpreting that, interpreting that as language. You understand what I'm saying, right? That's all going on, and you guys don't really have to think about that. That's how amazing each and every one of you are. The body's amazingly powerful and designed to be healthy and heal, but sometimes we make some poor decisions that get us heading in the wrong direction. Again, that's what today is about. What controls everything in your body? The nervous system, right? It's calling all the shots. Everything in the body ties into it somewhere. Every tissue, every cell, every organ, Everything is dependent on that nervous system to express proper function in life. It all ties in somewhere, okay? What's the hardest thing your body makes? Hardest substance. Spine. It's, yeah, it's bone. spine. Bone, yeah, bone, right? So, your smart body. We've got our skull. Brain is the most important, arguably, in the body, right? Because it's the master control system. Only organ in the body completely encased in solid bone. Then we have your spinal cord, which is really an extension of the brain. It's part of your central nervous system. It's ring after ring after ring after ring of solid bone. Your body, being intelligent, wants us to protect its most valuable assets. It uses bone to do it. And don't get me wrong, we have all these important structures in here that we have ribs and stuff that help protect and stuff like that too. But the nervous system is by far the only system that's heavily encased in solid bone. But because we want to be able to move and we have all that motion built into our spine, that's where problems can arise because something gets misaligned, not moving pressure properly, and that's ultimately subluxation, which we'll talk about more in a minute. And then modern life, unnaturally stressful. <coughs> who, hears what, who has stress in their life? Everybody, right? We all raise our hands, whether we want to raise our hands or not. We all deal with stresses. And I would be willing to bet most of you have more stress this year than you had last year. Most of us have more stress adding to our plates it's very rare I hear like, yeah, my life is getting less stressful, less stressful. Maybe we trade one form of stress for another form of stress, but you can't get rid of stress. It's always going to be there. And especially with our modern lifestyle, very unnaturally stressful. We do a lot of things to our bodies that we're not designed to function like that. That's not how optimally we were designed, but that's just how things have developed over time. So stress, it boils down to three main sources. There's your thoughts, your toxins, and your traumas, okay? mental stresses, emotional stresses, things like what we put into our body, food, chemicals from outside, pollutants, all that kind of stuff, and traumas, falls, micro traumas, like spending too much time on my cell phone, all that stuff. They all boil down to stress. And they hit us harder at this time of year, all three of these, this time of year. And that's why we have the holiday red zone. That's why we have that graph where the heart attacks and everything ramp up around this time of the year. People's bodies fail to adapt to the, the increased load and stress. Things break down. We have problems. So I love this statement. What's it say? Somebody help me out. You don't get sick, you do sick. Yeah. What does that mean? So if we're taking, have you ever heard the concept of it's not the seed, it's the soil? If I had a bunch of seeds, I scatter them all around like this. Is anything going to grow? No. Why? Yeah, there's no fertile soil here, right? We need that fertile, we need the right environment for that seed to grow. Same concept when we're talking about things like bacteria, viruses, and things like that. They're opportunistic. If my body is working at 100%, my immune system is working at 100%, I don't have fertile soil for that bacteria or virus to plant and grow and proliferate because my immune system will take care of it before it is. But if my immune system is run down, which we look at the stress response, like I'm gonna come all the way back. Immune system goes down when we're having stress. Now I got that virus or that bacteria that maybe my body would have just shrugged off on a good day. Now all of a sudden it's got a chance to get a foothold. And then maybe, I mean this is a classic case of what happened to me when I got sick. I had sore throat, scratchy throat, 
It was a Thursday. I was doing reports all morning. By the lunchtime break, we had to call Dr. Ron the Woods. He was out hunting because I had lost my voice. I was like, I can't do the remaining new patients and reports this afternoon. I just can't talk anymore. And then the next day, I found out my grandmother passed away. And that was pretty not fun. And I'm dealing with, I'm buying my own office, dealing with lawyers and stuff. There's a lot of other stresses there too. Wasn't resting, taking care of myself the day after I started getting sick. Then Saturday rolls around, I had an expo. Had a talk at the expo, so I had a voice for about a half hour of a four and a half hour expo. Last three and a half hours, and probing everybody like this, trying to get them to come in and get their spines checked. Exactly, it was pretty miserable. Sunday rolls around, tried to take it easy, but I got his family, then I'm riding up to the UP for the funeral on Monday. Snowball from there, lots and lots of stresses, not time to take care of myself. I was doing sick. I wasn't taking care of my body, and it, it, that virus had its way with me for a while, okay? So that's the concept there. Same concept applies to being healthy. You don't get healthy, you do healthy. When do you think I finally was able to fight off the bug? When I finally got back down here after the funeral and everything, and I was able to take a couple days and just sleep, literally like 18, 19, 20 hours in a day, only get up to use the potty and maybe eat a little bit of food. So that's when I got healthy, and then once I was able to take care of myself, right, I bounced back really quick. So, how to thrive through the holiday seasons. Tips you can take home with you. I wanna to try to be pragmatic. We wanna ultimately reduce stress and increase tolerance. They're two sides of the same coin, okay? Can you imagine if we're reducing stress? That's a good thing because there's less stress to deal with. But at the same time, if we can't get rid of all the stressors, what do we have to do? We have to make it easier for our body to adapt to stresses, right? That's increasing tolerance. They work together. So, I wanna be very pragmatic about this. What do we gotta stop doing? What do we gotta slow down on? What do we gotta start doing? So things to think about. Think to thrive. Attitude of gratitude. There's a lot of studies that show just having positive thoughts, positive feelings will have a positive impact on how your body functions. What's the first question we always ask you guys before we adjust you when you're laying face down? What's your good news today? Why? It's a very stressful thing. Well, that's not the purpose. We're not trying to stress you out. The idea is we want you thinking positive thoughts. We're about to put some energy into your body to reduce the subluxation to allow your body to function better. Do you think that's going to go better if you're stressed out about the holiday party I've got, the dinner I gotta make here, all these things that are stressing you out? Or do you think it's gonna be better received if your body's relaxed in a calm, open state of mind. That's the point of the, hey, what's your good news today? It's not to get you stressed out thinking about this stuff, it's just to be like, think about something positive. And even if you don't got something positive, just focus on your breathing. Just focusing on your breathing, trying to think about being great, great, think of something you're grateful for, just think about that, that does a lot. I've been studying things like Qigong, Tai Chi, stuff like that, that's all central to all those philosophies is you gotta think with love in your heart and fill your heart with love to really heal and express true health. Same goes for this. So connection, acceptance, respect, unconditional love, grace. You can choose, I like the saying, have you guys ever heard, you, can ch you can't choose how people treat or act towards you, but you can choose how you react to how people act and treat you. So maybe there are people in your life that are a negative influence, and you can't necessarily change that but can I make the conscious decision of I'm not gonna let that frustrate me and frazzle me and ruin my day? I can do that. Sometimes it's easier said than done, but the more we do it and the more we're conscious about doing it, we find the easier it becomes. And all of a sudden things that used to stress you out and tick you off, so you're like, you know what? It's not worth losing sleep over. I'm not gonna ruin my health worrying about somebody else's negativity. You have to sleep to thrive. <clears throat> So proper sleep is really important, okay? When we're talking about sleep, protect your rhythm. We're creatures of habit. We follow that circadian rhythm cycle, ideally in the perfect world, that's rising with the sun in the morning as the light comes out. We get more active as the midday comes out. Maybe we're getting out of the sun, taking a little nap or something like that. As the evening or afternoon progresses, that's typically when we're the most active. And then as the evening starts to roll around, that's when things start ramping back down again, okay? but just protecting that rhythm of I go to bed roughly the same time, I wake up roughly the same time, is really beneficial for establishing patterns of 
positivity in your life. Uh, get up early, take naps. Taking naps is really big. Power naps, who here knows about power naps? They're huge. A 15 minute nap in the middle of the day can do a huge, huge amount of benefit. It doesn't even have to be like I'm knocked out for like two hours or something like that. A quick little power nap in the middle of the day can really do a lot to recharge your batteries. E-fast, what's, what's E-fast mean? Electronics. Yeah, take a break off of electronics, why? Very stressful on your eyes. It is stressful it's on your eyes. A lot of the electronics, they produce an artificial light that stimulates the pineal gland. That's the one of the parts in your brain that stimulates things like melatonin or the suppresses. So it creates neurotransmitters that stimulate wakefulness. Okay? And then often, what are we looking at when we're looking at our things? Down your phone. Yeah, down on your phone. So you got that stress. That's a good, I, I wasn't going with that one. But like Facebook or something like that, right? A lot of us are looking at, so we're now we're looking at all the social media, all the, or I'm checking my emails, all that kind of stuff. And then we're reacting to life. We're reacting to all these situations where as we channel those to the appropriate times and places, not right before we're about to go to bed, or like video games. It's like I used to be a, a hardcore gamer once upon a time. I remember like your games, like your Call of Duty and stuff like that. What's that doing to me inside? I'm playing a video game. Getting yeah, getting my adrenaline going. I'm running around shooting people and stuff like that, right? And this, that, that gets things, it wakes things up, it ramps things up, it makes me more alert. If I'm losing, maybe I'm getting frustrated and ticked off at the game. So all these things aren't conducive to helping you get a better sleep. It's things that interrupt that. Don't overcommit. Have you ever heard no is a love word sometimes? That's something that I think a lot of us are guilty of. We got families, we got people that expect us. We got things like, I don't know, you got your famous broccoli, cheesy broccoli dish or something that everybody always wants you to bring to every single party. And now you gotta bring that to every single party. Or I gotta make cookies, I gotta make whatever. I gotta be to this event, I gotta be to that event. Next thing you know, you're burning the candle at both ends. You don't have enough time, you're not taking care of yourself because you're trying to satisfy all these social obligations. Sometimes it's okay to say no politely, respectfully. If people care about you, they'll understand. Check your expectations. Has anybody ever tried to plan like the perfect party or dinner and whatever and everything just falls apart and goes horribly wrong and then you're stressed out and you're ticked off and you're not enjoying your life and then that happens a lot. We have our these lofty expectations of what we want. Our expectations aren't met. That creates frustration. That creates stress. That robs us of our ability to adapt. We gotta eat to thrive. So ultimately, don't starve yourself. We don't wanna be starving ourselves, okay? We wanna make sure we're filling ourselves up with healthy foods. So things like your lean meats, your veggies, your fruits. We're staying away from the processed things, the whites, flour, sugar, that kind of stuff. Uh, battles won at the register, too many teas in there. So don't buy the junk food and you won't eat it. It's that simple. It's like, if I go home, I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm addicted to these little, they're, these little ice cream cookies that are like Oreo or uh, M&M cookies on the outside that's ice cream sandwiches. Mm -hmm. I buy those things. I'm, I'm ashamed to admit, but I will eat all 10 of them in a single night if it's in the freezer. It's, it's happened before. And then it's like, oh, I don't have any and I'm craving one, so I buy another box thinking I'll be better this time. No, it's in the freezer. It's gone in the next couple days. I have no self-control if I've got it. The way I don't eat 10 ice cream bars in a single night, I don't buy them at the store so that I'm not tempted. Don't drink your calories. Who's alcohol? But even like the coffee drinks. How many calories are in like a Big B or something like that? A lot. Thousands. <clears throat> Depending on the size you're getting, how many shots of whatever you're putting in it. So don't drink the calories. Avoid okay, the white stuff. Sugars, flours, all that kind of stuff can be very, very pro-inflammatory to our bodies. So eat the thrive. Plenty of veggies. I'm not worried about your ODing on veggies, okay? Plenty of lean cuts of things like natural meats, fishes, eggs. It's better to buy the higher quality stuff. The organic, the non-GMO, stuff that's not pumped full of hormones and antibiotics. It's better for your body. The grass-fed meats and things like that, yeah, they're a little bit more expensive, but they're much more high quality proteins for your body to use. Uh, things like some nuts, fruits, seeds, Fruits you gotta be a little bit careful with because a lot of them turn into sugar. So if you're just eating a lot, a lot of fruit, don't be wrong, it's all in moderation good, but too much fruit, uh, fruit can, can be problematic. 
no hard, refined carbs, sugars. So a lot of like the sweets, with chocolates and candies, and I'm, you know, we're on the holidays. I'm not really, I'm not taking it away from you completely, but the more you can have control and not allow yourself to have that stuff, the better it's gonna be. Supplements, who here takes supplements? Yeah, they're a good way to get a lot of stuff. It's really hard to get all the nutrients we need in our modern society. Even like a lot of the fruits and veggies and stuff like that, our soils are depleted of a lot of the stuff we need, so it's just not in the food anymore. That's where we're having a good quality supplements. Some of the big ones hit, things like probiotics, taking care of your gut flora, because if your gut flora is working right, things work a lot better. Vitamin D, really important around this area, around this time of year, because what are we getting less exposure to? Sun. Sun helps create vitamin D. So you have to get, you have to get somewhere. All of leaf, leaf extract is good for things like inflammation. Fish oil, also good for things like inflammation. Cell membranes and things like that. Regeneration, all that, good quality things. And if you're, the, the biggest thing about supplements is you have to get it from a good quality source. It's not usually a good idea to go to like Meyer or Walmart or Harding's and just buy the cheapest, buy one, get one free type stuff because supplements are not well regulated in this country. You're buying the cheap stuff, you're not getting what you think you're getting. A lot of times the quality's not there, a lot of times they're not even putting in there what they're saying they're putting in there, because they don't really have to prove that they're putting in what they're saying in there, they just have to prove that it's not gonna hurt somebody. And that's it. That's the nice thing about if you're ever thinking about supplements, you can set up a nutritional consult with Lindsay. She'll go through things. If you're ever thinking about looking at some of these supplements, you have questions, I guarantee you any supplements we keep on those shelves, pharmaceutical grade. They're designed, they're tested by the third parties to make sure that it's you're getting what you're, you're advertised to be getting, you're getting in the quantities that you're supposed to be getting in it, and it's a good quality source. So thoughts, traumas, tracts, it all boils down to stress. That's what we're trying to eliminate, okay? Or reduce as much as we can, or adapt better too. And then you have macro traumas, that's when we fall. That's what most people think about. The micro traumas, on, let's just leave that slide. That's like the cell phones, like you were talking about. Doing on the cell phone, this kind of thing. We see this kind of stuff all the time. We're sitting there watching TV, or I'm on the couch, or I'm in the recliner chair, I'm holding these really unnatural positions for a long period of time. Micro traumas. All these stressors ultimately lead to a condition that we call a subluxation. Big fancy word. And it's not as simple as just a bone being out of point, a place. That's a big part of it. You get that joint misalignment, and that starts this whole cascade of problems. Now we have some soft tissue damage. You can see that's a good example of soft tissue. We got a disc that's bulging, inflamed, irritated, hitting that nerve root. That inflammation irritates the nerve. That, your body responds to that by tightening up the muscles around it. That's the same concept. I think I just talked about if you were gonna punch me in the stomach right now and I saw it coming, I'd flex up, right? Same thing with my paraspinal muscles. My brain gets messages, something's not right in there. It says, okay, body, muscles, lock it down. Don't let it move, because it wants to protect it. It's smart, it needs to protect it. Then we have a speck joint. Then we have stress hormones increasing, things like cortisol. So that flight or fight response, now it's not a bear that's threatening me. It's chronic subluxation. It's chronic nerve irritation. It's creating that heightened sense of stress, elevated stress that your body just never ramps down from. <clears throat> that's the stress process right there all this stuff is going on and again it doesn't matter if it's a bear it doesn't matter if it's Thanksgiving dinner coming up around the corner it doesn't matter if it's my job or my my student loans or whatever it is take your stress we have them all and that's the thing about the bummer about modern society is we have them all in abundance and they just don't go away it's not like hey the bear's gone now I can relax my student loans are still gonna be there for me in the morning until I get them all paid off. My job stressors are gonna be there for me when I cut job stressors until I take care of the problems, right? The Thanksgiving dinner is not gonna be done until Thanksgiving's over. And then maybe I have another party after that. Then I have Christmas things to start worrying about, Christmas presents, all that kind of stuff. All these stressors just don't go away. And that's where we gotta start picking and choosing our battles and figure out what, we really, what are our priorities. There's the microphone, I just got this place. So subluxation, I love this diagram. I think I've gone over this with a few of you. We look at these bones in there. We can see that misalignment. we can see the degeneration. You can see the pointy edges on that thing, that bone's wearing out. Now arthritis, I hear this a lot, it's normal. I'm getting old. It's normal for me to have arthritis. 
But let me ask you, if this person is 60 years old, how old is that bone right there? 60. How old is that bone right there? 60. That's just a normal part of being 60? Why don't they all look like that? Because that's not normal. It's not just a normal part of getting aged. It's common as we get older because a lot of us have stresses, injuries, and things that heal and incorrectly that promote this kind of change. But if we take care of these problems, and especially early on before they become degenerated, the disc is worn out, the arthritis is there, a lot of times we can nip these things in the bud. That's why we have our wall of well-adjusted kids. That's why we push to see little ones in this office. They don't have a lot of problems yet, typically not long-term chronic problems, but a lot of them have problems in the spine, subluxation. They may not even feel it yet. What's typically the first trauma we get in our lives? First. Being born, very traumatic. Priority one is just getting the baby out of there. You're twisting, you're pulling, you're using forceps, vacuums, whatever they gotta do, they're getting baby out of there. Whether it's a vaginal birth, a cesarean birth, they're getting baby out of there, that's priority number one. They gotta break a clavicle, they'll break, break a clavicle. They gotta turn the head 360 degrees, they'll turn the head 360 degrees. There are studies that show sudden infant death syndrome, their thinking can be one of the causes, cervical misalignments, upper cervical misalignments. Twisting, pulling on that baby's head, trying to get the baby out, that's right around the brain stem. Brain stem controls what? A lot of your higher functions, like your heart beating, your lungs breathing. You take that out, all of a sudden the baby's, the baby's failing to thrive. I'm not saying that's all cases of sudden infant death syndrome, but there are cases that have been relinked to severe gross misalignments in that upper neck. So that's why it's so important to get the kids checked. So the holiday red zone, we're all stressed this time of year. You don't care how much you love your families, your friends, all the stuff, it's, there's more stress in our lives with the gifts, the parties, the obligations, all that kind of stuff. We've got to start making decisions to help mitigate that the best we can. And then we talked about increasing tolerance. How can we increase tolerance? How can we make our bodies better able to adapt to the stress we have to deal with? We can't get rid of the stress, maybe. So we gotta make it easier for our bodies to adapt to the stress. What do you guys think? Subluxation. <coughs> Rob's a function of the nervous system, right? It's the circuit breaker, your spine. Power goes up, what do we do? We check the circuit breaker, right? We flip the switch where it's flipped off. So now we're taking the circuit breaker out of that's the spine. Now we have some digestive issues, chronic heartburn. We check the spine, I find some nerve irritation in there. And I say, hey, these nerves go to control things like your stomach, your esophagus. Can't necessarily guarantee if I take that nerve irritation out, the heartburn will go away. But I see it happen a lot. And I see it happen on people that never even told me they had heartburn. They're coming in for their back pain, their low back pain, or their neck pain, their headaches, whatever it is. Those are the common things we see people for first. But then as we're getting them adjusted and correcting what originally drove them here, the cause of what drove them here, other things start working like they're supposed to. They notice the heartburn goes away, or I'm not getting the chronic sinus infections that I was getting, or the chronic ear infections, or whatever it might be. When the nervous system works like it's supposed to, the body functions better, period. So subluxation, robbing our body's ability to adapt to stress. If the subluxation is robbing our ability to adapt to stress, and our goal is to increase our ability to adapt to stress, what do we gotta do? We gotta get rid of the subluxations. And that's what getting adjusted is for. So we're here, subluxations cause stress. All this stuff is true, your body's healthy, your body's smart, it's designed to be healthy, it's designed to function. But stress is what limits our body's ability to adapt. Subluxation is what limits our body's ability to adapt. So how do you know you have subluxation? Let's say it's not irritating that 6% of your nerve that'll tell your brain it hurts. How do you know it's there? No, we just said it's not getting that the pain part. So yeah, it might be pain. If it's bad enough and it's hitting that nerve, you might feel pain. But usually pain's one of the last things we see. So say I've got a subluxation, but it's not hitting that 6%. I have no pain whatsoever to speak of. Posture. posture might give some clues to it. Often you gotta get checked. That's what it boils down to. That's what we do day in and day out. We check spines. And when I meet somebody with first time, 
I don't care if they're telling me the problem's all down here. Don't, don't know, I do care. I do listen to them and listen to what their concerns are. But what do I check? I check the spine down here. Where else do I check the spine? Everywhere else. The neck. Yeah, especially the neck because I know top five, bottom five, there's a strong play there. Sometimes trying to get this thing to calm down and do what it's supposed to do, I really gotta fix this thing first. Sometimes there's something in the middle is driving it all. So we check it all. We check the entire spine. And sometimes people think I'm crazy. I'm like, feel along their spine? They're like, no, doc, the problem's down here. The problem's down here. That's where I feel it all. It's all right there. Or it's on this side. It's on this side. Why are you working on this side? It's on this side. And it's like, I understand you feel it all on this side. But the problem, the restricted joint's on this side. Your body's compensating, overcompensating. That's why you feel it on that side. That's why I don't chase pain as a way of trying to treat somebody. I look for these subluxations, correct these subluxations. Finding a subluxation is a complicated process. We do a thorough exam here. Most of you, uh, everybody here has gone through an exam at this point. What do we do? First we just talk, down and talk, about, talk about what your concerns are, right? And then I stood you in front of a mirror. And we saw, you're higher on that side, you're lower on this side. See how you're leaning off the side? See how that's rolled forward like that? See how your head's slowing forward like that? We go through the posture analysis, right? Then we do the palpation. I lay on the table, I feel bone by bone. And as I'm feeling along there, and then I find that spot, I'm like, hey, you feel that? And you're like, yeah, stop touching that, that hurts. Like, that's a subluxation. These nerves go here, here, here. Do you have any of these problems? And they're like, yeah, how'd you know that? It's because you're subluxated right there. Those nerves control that stuff. I didn't know. In a way, I was just fishing. But then I know if this nerve down here controls things like my bladder, my bowels, and I feel irritation in there, and that person's like, wow, that's, even if they don't feel like it hurts, I get people that have just weird high pain tolerances, and I'm sitting there like digging in, and I'm like, you feel that? And I'm like, mm, I feel you pushing on it. And I'm like, you have a high pain tolerance? And I'm like, yeah, probably. And I'm like, yeah, I agree, because usually I, I find pressure like that, people are jumping off the table, swatting at me, saying, hey, stop touching that, that doesn't feel good. And you're just like, mm, whatever. And I'm like, hey, do you by a chance get diarrhea? Yeah, how'd you know? Well, I really didn't, but I know you're irritated down here, and I know those nerves go to control things like the bowels, and that's potentially something you could experience. And then we start fixing that, and what goes away? Not only the back pain, but the diarrhea, or the stomach problem, or the liver problem, or the gallbladder problem, or whatever it is. So then we do things like x-rays, scans, objective measures so we can see and we can tell how those things are functioning. It's all together, that's the process. So it's all about what is your body telling you? That's what these workshops are about. Figuring out the body signals. The body signals are your intelligent body's way of trying to communicate there's a problem. We've gotta know how to listen to those problems and properly interpret those problems. And how we fix the problems. Three-legged stool. Has everybody seen this one at this point? Maybe not you, you haven't gotten through yet. You'll get there, trust me. Three-legged stool. Break the bad habits. Sometimes that's easier said than done, right? Sometimes we can't get rid of the bad habits all together, so we gotta modify them the best we can. Add specific stretches and exercises. I think most of you at this point have at least gotten your basic stretches, if not the exercises, designed to help re-support all that connective tissue, muscle, everything, as we're fixing the subluxations, getting the body, hey, remember you gotta be like this, stay like this. And then it's chiropractic adjustments. And it's not the adjustments alone. What's the key word when it comes with the adjustments? Repetition. Yeah, rhythm. Getting those adjustments building in rhythm. Especially in the beginning. We got a problem that's been there for a while. We're on our continuum. If you remember that arrow, we've got momentum going this way. Those adjustments, one adjustment doesn't stop everything. It's slowing that big negative momentum. That next adjustment's building on that first adjustment slowing that negative momentum. And then as we keep building those adjustments, that's helping to stop that, helping you get the ball rolling in the right direction. Especially when we work in, with stretches, the exercises, breaking the bad habits, all that kind of stuff. We're adding everything we can to get that ball rolling in the good direction, okay? So that's what it's all about. We can ignore our problems, but what happens when we ignore our problems? They, they typically don't go away, and they typically get worse. Five most dangerous words when it comes to your health. Maybe it will go away. <coughs> We've all said it, right? We've all been there. But we ignore our problems, they get worse. So that's what it's all about. Now I know everybody here is in the office. 
at this point when I have guests and things, I always make an invitation. If you want to get your spine checked, you're probably thinking right now, I wonder what kind of state my spine is in. That's where I would invite whoever is here to get the discounted exam, only 20 bucks, which is normally 290 bucks when you fill it all out. I will give you guys the invitation. If you're thinking of somebody that should be here right now and you want to get them a Christmas present, get their spine checked, we'll do it. It's only 20 bucks. Sometimes they use it, sometimes they don't. I had a family at my last workshop, bought the, did the $35 pass for the entire family, gave it to their son, daughter-in-law, and their three kids. We haven't seen them in the office yet, but they got that invitation and they know, hey, someone cares about me. We can plant the seed, it might not grow that time, but one thing I do know is the more you plant the seed, the more you water the seed, the more you take care of that seed, eventually something grows. You can't force somebody to do something they don't want to do, but you can intentionally nudge them and be like, hey, I met this chiropractor, I bought you this invite, I would like if you went and talked to him, because I know you're dealing with a lot of stress and problems. And I'm not saying he's gonna fix all your problems, but you can sit down and talk to him. We'll do the same exam we did with you guys. Figure out if there's something we can do. If there's something we can do, we'll let him know. If there's nothing we can do, we'll let him know that too. Fortunately, that doesn't happen very often, that there's nothing we can do, but if it does happen, then we figure our job is to try to figure out where can we get this person to try to get the results that they're looking for. Okay? Any questions for me? And that's all I got, guys. Very good. All right. Well, thanks for coming out.